be to Jesus Christ now and forever. Dear students, welcome to the second session of chapter 1, The Worship of God. Let us all join hands for a short prayer. Lord Jesus, I thank you for all the blessings you have given us. I surrender my mind, my memory, my intellect into your hands. Send your Holy Spirit on me to come to my intellect to enlighten me so that I may study well. Holy Spirit, my helper, fill me with your wisdom, knowledge and understanding. Amen. So, dear students, before we begin with today's session, let's try to recall what we learned in the previous session. In the previous session, we learned about man, the worshipper, worship of God in the Old Testament. We even learned how the Israelites devoted their lives to God. In today's session, we would be learning about worship of God with heart, worship of God with truth and the spirit, and we would be learning about liturgy. So, let's begin with worship with heart. We know the Israelites worship God by performing sacrifices, giving offerings, reading the Bible, reciting psalms, and breaking of bread. But gradually, God started to refuse their offerings. God started to refuse their worship. What could be the reason for this? Even though the Israelites were performing sacrifices and giving offerings, it was only a form of external formality. It became only in their actions. They were not doing it with their heart. Even though the Israelites were reading the Bible, they were reciting Psalms, but they were not doing it with their heart, rather they were doing it only with their lips. Because of this, God started to refuse their worship. God started to refuse their sacrifices. So let's see what God says through prophet Isaiah chapter 29 verse 13. The Lord says, Jesus people, come near me with their mouth and honor me with their lips. But their hearts are far away from me. What does this Bible verse mean? It clearly states that we need to worship God not just with our lips, not just with our actions. We need to worship our Lord with our sincere heart. Let's examine ourselves. During this pandemic time, how were we attending the Holy Kurbana or Holy Masses at our homes? Did we sincerely attend it or was it just a sake of formality? Did we recite our prayers just with our lips or did we recite it by understanding the meaning of each prayer? During the adoration, do we bow down just because the Father asks us to bow down? Or do we bow down with love and gratitude towards the Holy Eucharist? Let's ask ourselves, do we worship with heart or do we worship without heart? Let's consider another example. How do we recite the family prayer? Or family rosary at our homes? 
Is it just a set of prayers which we say? Or do we say the prayers by understanding the meaning of each prayer? Let's recall all our actions and let's ask ourselves, do we worship sincerely with heart or do we worship just for a sake of formality? Let's go with worship with spirit. What does worship with truth and spirit mean? It means returning the love in the same way how God loved us. It means fulfilling the wishes of our loving one and sacrificing our own wishes. Let's take Jesus for example. We know that God the Father loved the world so much that he was ready to sacrifice his only son Jesus for us. Jesus being obedient to God was ready to fulfill the wishes of God the Father sacrificed his only life on Mount Calvary. Jesus died for all of us for our sins on the cross. Hence we say the sacrifice which Jesus gave as a true form of worship with spirit. Let's see what St. Irenaeus says about worship. Can anyone tell me who is St. Irenaeus? St. Irenaeus is a Greek bishop noted for his role in expanding the Christian community. As per the saint, in order to worship God, we need to lead a life based on the commandments. Can anyone tell me how many commandments do we have? We have 10 commandments which God the Father gave us. Jesus summarized these 10 commandments to two most important commandments. Can anyone tell me what are the two most important commandments? Let's take a look at a short video and try to understand what are the two most important commandments. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So, as we saw in the video, the most important commandment is, you shall love your Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul and with all your strength. This is the first and the greatest commandment. The second commandment is, you shall love your neighbor as yourselves. If we lead our lives based on the commandments, we are leading a life designed by God. Let's do a quick evaluation. Are we ready to forgive our friends? Do we still hold hatred towards each other? Do we love our neighbors like we love ourselves? Do we sacrifice our wishes just like how Jesus sacrificed on the cross? Do we worship with truth and spirit? Let's ask these questions to ourselves and answer it to our conscience. Church the worshipping community. Just like the Israelites were called the old Israel, we, the church, is called the new Israel. Just like how God the Father loved the Israelites, God loves us. God loves the church. God loves the new Israel. Jesus proved his love for us by dying on the cross, 
he sacrificed his life for us in the previous session we learned how the israelites worship god so let's see how we the church worship god we worship god by participating in the holy qurbana or the holy mass which is a celebration of the sacrifice of jesus we participate and celebrate the sacraments we participate and worship through the liturgical year we participate in the sacramentals so hence we unite ourselves with jesus and we become one worshiping community of the new testament next is liturgy what does liturgy mean can anyone give me an answer liturgy means the official and public worship of god it originates from a greek word liturgia meaning public activity when we start to publicly praise god we say we are participating in the liturgy let's consider some examples during this pandemic time we know the nurses the doctors the caretakers the higher authorities they are all striving hard to save us during this pandemic they are all sacrificing their wishes and they are serving us they are in a way publicly praising god they are partaking in the liturgy and worshiping god in the same way god wants all of us he calls all one of us to come together and worship and praise god through liturgy a christian partakes in the incarnation life passion crucifixion resurrection and descent of the holy spirit it is the duty of each and every christian to unite with the church and worship god before we end this session let's take down a quick assignment dear students please open the bible and read with devotion the letter to the romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 i repeat the letter to the romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 i request each and every student to write it down in your notebooks and submit it to your class teacher let's end this session with a short prayer almighty god i thank you for giving us this opportunity to study lord jesus help us to fully observe all the knowledge that we have gained may this knowledge bring us closer to you i ask all of jesus in the name of jesus christ glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen praise be to jesus christ now and forever